Well, hello everyone and welcome to Oh Yum. I am so thrilled to be back here with another live and it's another comfort bake. You've seen the thumbnail. I am making blueberry streusel muffins and this is a brand new recipe. I have spent a lot of time making these muffins over the course of, what, Michael, a year, probably, maybe even a little longer, and I have settled on this version. Just to let you know, if you're just joining me or if you're new to the channel, first off, hi, I'm Anna. Uh, you'll see the full recipe is below the video window. I don't hold back on information, measurements, method. The entire recipe is there. I have to say my round of hellos, mom, I know you're catching this later on. Kathy, you're baking along, and if there are others of you baking along with me too, please check the recipe below. The first thing you wanna do is preheat your oven to 375 Fahrenheit, that's 190 Celsius. Suzanne and Bruce, hello. Bonnie, of course, you're going to be getting at least a dozen blueberry muffins. Who loves blueberry muffins? I mean, they're just such a staple. And I think what I like about this recipe is this is really that bake shop style blueberry muffin. I wanted to pack in as much blueberry flavor and a really nice, soft, tender muffin without being too extreme on one or the other in terms of flavor, but have lots of beautiful aroma when it bakes. Now, last week, First off, thank you for all of you who watched that video, liked it. Um, we've just had such a fabulous response to my oatmeal cookies, the chewiest ever. I put in a batch of cookies at the beginning of the live stream so you could see them live come out of the oven. So I'm doing the same thing with a batch of my blueberry muffins. Have we got an overhead head shot, Michael, so we can see them before they go in the oven? I will make the full recipe, but they're going in now, and this time I'll remember to set the timer. I kind of forgot last time. There we go, the countdown's on, and part of a really good cozy bake, a comfort bake, a fulfilling bake, is it shouldn't be terribly difficult or steppy. And I love a streusel topped muffin. But any recipe I had found previously involved making the streusel separately, a, a completely different formula. You set it aside and then you make your muffins. I have found a really nice way to combine the two to save on a little time and a little bit of measuring. So, oh, hello, look at all of you joining me from everywhere. Puerto Rico, Florida, Michigan, I saw Oregon, uh, another Florida. Um, Nebraska, so hello to everyone. Saskatchewan, I saw, yes, I know you're all gonna tell me. Oh, from Portugal, look at this. So many people joining me and please remember to ask me your baking questions as we go along. This is the benefit of the live stream is I can tailor this to what you want to know as I prepare this recipe. So I'm not sifting my ingredients, but I'm going to aerate and combine my dry ingredients using a whisk. So all your dry ingredients go into your bowl first. Your all purpose flour your half a cup or 100 grams of sugar, and you'll see there's a measurement for an extra tablespoon. I'll get to that in a second. So this is just the half cup or 100 grams. I've got my two teaspoons of baking powder and just a quarter teaspoon of salt. Salt in baking is there for the same reason it is in cooking. It's to heighten and balance flavors. It's a small little measurement. If you feel like you wanna pull that out, you can do that 100%. Now what I like to do when it comes to a simple blueberry muffin is build in some aromatics into the batter. And so I like adding a little lemon zest and you could certainly add, I love the combination of blueberry and lime zest. That would be a great idea. For people like yourself, Cherry, I know you're watching because you asked some amazing questions before we even got going. Um, you could use calamansi zest in there, which has a, a beautiful aroma as well. I think calamansi is the new yuzu. It's such a hot flavor, it's delicious. Oh, it's a fantastic citrus flavor and aroma, very tart and tangy. 
So I'm adding about two teaspoons of finely grated lemon zest. There we go. And while I've got the grater, I have a whole little nutmeg and I'm just adding about a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. If you have previously ground nutmeg, of course you can use that too. But I like how the zester gives you such a fine grating of it. And you may be asking yourself, well, why did you choose to add nutmeg to a blueberry muffin recipe? And oh, we have people, we've got Michael, people from, more people from the Philippines, Mexico City. <laughs> As a tip, I will be in Mexico City this summer. I can't wait. Um, back to the recipe. The reason I add the nutmeg is, have you ever had a really good homemade, simple sugar donut? And really the only flavor inside the donut itself is nutmeg. And I find it gives these muffins, adding that quarter teaspoon of nutmeg gives these muffins that hint of a donut flavor. So it's more of that sort of bake shop flavor I'm trying to build in. So now I whisk it all together. This is aerating the flour at the same time. It's working in the lemon zest. So a little bit of friction is drying out the oils, making sure that baking powder is blended in. Simple. I've already got my butter melted. And now some of you were asking some good questions about using other options instead of butter. If you wanted to melt coconut oil, that would be a fantastic option in this recipe. Um, you could use, you could use vegetable oil if you wanted to, but then you're lacking a dimension of flavor. And so I feel like the butter or the coconut oil really adds what it needs to. I'm adding just the butter right to the dry ingredients. And now it's up to you if you wanna use your spatula or if you'd like to use a pastry blender, either will work. And just stirring this butter, that small a quantity of butter into the dry mixture is immediately going to create a crumble. And that is the foundation of the streusel topping that I'll separate out. So some lumps are okay. This will, this will not come together at all when you mix it. And you wanna keep mixing until you no longer see any visible bits of flour, that white powdery flour substance. And just to show you, if you wanted to use the pastry blender, the technique is still the same. The result is sa the same. You wanna get rid of, for the most part, the large pieces. You wanna break it down a little bit. But it stays crumbly, so don't try and bring this together in a batter. Ah, Serafima, you're asking a very good question. Uh, and Leslie, I'll get to your question in a second too. What's my signature dish? Oh, Michael, what would be my signature dish? My butter tarts, maybe? I've really worked on my butter tarts for a long time, and I haven't changed that recipe. I would say, oh, well, definitely here on Oh Yum, my signature recipe um, would be my chocolate chip cookies. Because if you check out, it, they've got a lot of views. And my secret is the addition of cornstarch. And I added those to my oatmeal cookies yesterday, or yesterday, last week, um, to keep the, so the cookies soft. Now, Leslie, you were asking, measuring by volume or by weight, if you can at all, try and get in the habit of measuring by weight. Because it doesn't matter how you get your ingredients from your canisters or containers to your bowl if you're using a scale, because a gram is a gram. Um, but if you're measuring with cups, you know, the flour you have to spoon in, level out gently, brown sugar you pack in. There's a different tip for every type of measuring where a scale is easier, faster, tidier, more consistent. So now that I've got this crumble mixture, I'm gonna spoon out about half a cup, so 75 grams or so. And I'm putting that in a separate bowl. And I'll just, for the sake of the overhead cam, is this okay, Michael, yep. here? Um, so this half a cup set aside is now the streusel. So to sweeten it up a little bit, that's what that extra tablespoon of sugar you'll see in your ingredient list is for. And I don't add my cinnamon to the blueberry muffin batter because I want that to be nice and bright and light. But I do want 
that hint of cinnamon aroma, so I add it to the streusel topping, and just with a spoon, give that a stir in. Now, how easy is that? You just take the batter you're already making and just add a little cinnamon and a little extra sugar to it, and you're all set. So now I can set that back, bring this, my crumbly mixture back to the center, and I'm just, do, do, do. Oh, Natasha, it's okay that <laughs> you missed the notification. We're glad you're here. I'm making blueberry streusel muffins if you're new to the party. And I've already got a batch in that will be coming out in about 11 minutes. Now it's time for the wet ingredients. And this is how beautifully simple this recipe is. You don't have to mix them up separately in a different bowl and then add them. This comes together quickly. So I'm going to pour my 2% milk. And if you're baking without dairy, you could use um, oat milk, I find is a great dairy alternative. Um, you could use almond milk, you could use soy milk. I steer clear of rice milk because I find it's just too thin and just doesn't have enough natural sweetness and character to it. I will add just a splash of vanilla. Alyssa, whole milk is of course 100% fine. Just a little vanilla, because I'm not making a cake, we're making muffins, so I just want that hint of the aroma. And I'll crack my two large eggs. Now what is, actually, this is very, very important. I measured out my milk about an hour ago, so it has been sitting out at room temperature to warm up to room temperature. My eggs are at room temperature. Because of the melted butter, and all I'm doing is stirring with a whisk, in order to minimize the lumps, although a few lumps are okay, you want to make sure, and it is specified in the ingredient list, that your milk and your eggs are at room temperature. Very, very important, so that when you stir, if you added cold milk and cold eggs, that melted butter, well, it would seize up and you would have a very, very lumpy batter. So you wanna make sure those two ingredients are at room temperature, but do note you will see lumps in the batter. And that's, just like when you make a pancake batter, lumps are okay. Not too many, but I always give this a really good vigorous stir by hand. But don't worry at this point if you see lumps. Now I'll switch back to my whisk and it's time for the blueberries. Um, Laura, I'm glad I could up your baking game as you say. Um, oh, oh, and you're asking about a recipe um, now, oh, sorry to finish my chat with you, Laura. You're embracing gluten-free and sugar-free baking. You're not the first person to ask for a few sugar-free recipes, so I am taking that and noting it. Um, and I'll let you know if you subscribe, you'll get the notification, and I'll make sure you know if a recipe is sugar-free that I'll be making. Owen, oh, I do have a recipe for blueberry pie. You find it right here on the channel and it includes a cooked blueberry filling and a beautiful lattice top to the top of it. So you can check that out right here on the channel. Um, oh, and Uzma, I'm glad you make the oatmeal cookies and the banana bread. We were talking about how that banana bread has done really well. That's my go-to. I mean, that's what I call it. It's my go-to banana bread. Um, Sue is asking how you keep the streusel crisp. There is no moisture, like any liquid, water. It is just the flour, the sugar, the butter that moistens it and binds it. So when it bakes, it kind of toasts on top and it will not liquefy. Um, and Leslie, I'm getting to that topic about the dried blueberries. Um, these questions are fantastic. Thank you everyone for asking these questions. So now it's time to stir in the fruit. I love to load up a blueberry muffin with blueberries. Like, we just need to own it. It's a blueberry muffin recipe. I remember I, I would add a cup of blueberries and I think that was standard for a dozen recipes. It just wasn't enough for me. And then I went up to two cups of blueberries and that was way too much and they ended up sinking to the bottom of the muffin tin. So I find a cup and a half is perfect. These are just gigantic blueberries. Um, 
But in addition to that, to really give you that bake shop blueberry character, I wanna bolster the flavor. And so this is where I add dried blueberries. They've got a concentrated flavor. They hydrate as the muffins bake and they make, they really just add so much to the recipe. If you don't have dried blueberries, if you can get your hands on freeze dried blueberries, you'll get the same effect. Now freeze dried blueberries are fantastic because you can grind them and turn them into a blueberry powder. And they hydrate when you stir them into things like whipped cream. So all of a sudden whipped cream becomes blueberry whipped cream when you add the powder from any freeze dried fruit. Raspberries, another very popular option. These will soften when you fold them into your blueberry batter. If you don't have fresh blueberries, and the reason, I'll be honest, the reason I picked the fresh blueberries is they're just easier to handle because they don't have that moisture that then turns the batter gray when you start stirring it. So can you use frozen blueberries? I think, Cherry, you were asking that question. Yes, you can. I pull them right from the freezer, don't let them thaw at all, and then dust them with a little bit of flour to coat them. And when you add them to your batter, just try and give them a one, two, three stir, a very quick stir, so they don't start bleeding into the, the batter itself. And do make sure if you're using frozen berries, uh, make sure your oven is fully heated to 375 because those frozen berries are now cooling down that batter and you may find you have to cook your muffins an extra, not too long, another two to three minutes. Oh, Michael, we have someone joining us. Maria from Canary Islands. Mm -hmm. I think you're the first person I've, you've told me that you're watching from Canary Islands. <laughs> Um, and Peter switches out the recipes to a gluten-free alternative. It's so much easier now, isn't it, Peter, that there are so many better options for gluten-free flour bread blends out there. Even five years ago, it was tougher to find a consistent blend that you could use in many styles of baking. Yeah, sure, some were good for cookies, some for cakes, but not all sort of general baking. There's so much, uh, so many more to choose from. It's fantastic. Uh, Michelle's asking a question about changing the baking for high altitude. And if I can ask you a favor, I washed my portion scoop from the last batch of muffins I bake and I forgot to bring it back over. So I'm gonna scoop my mush muffins. I'll, I'll get to your question in just a second, Michelle. I am lining my muffin tin. This recipe makes 12 muffins with paper liners. You can just grease the tin if you want to. And it takes a generous scoop. This is what always happens when I have to cook and talk at the same time. I was so tidy when I was doing this quietly by myself earlier. There we go. I think this is why you enjoy the lives because you know what's real. And I'm just gonna have to scrub the pan a little bit when I'm done. But you can see with every scoop how many blueberries are making it into each muffin. It feels almost like a one-to-one -one ratio of batter to blueberries. I'm just gonna take a little peek at my timer. Oh, we're doing well with our first batch that's in the oven right now. Um, Steve is asking, what size scoop? That's a good question. Can I read on here? It's number 20. Uh, does it say a volume? One and five eighth ounce. So what is that in milliliters? Almost 60, about 50. About 50 milliliters, 45, 50 milliliters. The numbering, the numbering system is based on how many portions from an imperial quart. Seriously? Yeah. Well, Michael, if you, I don't know if you heard that information. I just learned something, <laughs> that the numbering system on the scoop is based ha on how many portions, uh, how many scoops you get in a, an imperial quart. So the higher the number, the larger, or the smaller the scoop, correct? Because a size 100 means you get a lot of little scoops. Yeah. And all right, I never knew that. <laughs> 
In case you didn't know, in addition to Michael being in charge of the tech here um, on Oyam, running all the cameras, taking care of the sound, the lights, everything, it's, it's a, truly is a one-man show on the tech side here. He also teaches full-time at Niagara College in their culinary school. So you can imagine the two of us, we pretty much talk about food nonstop all the time. So ask away when it comes to those technical questions because he can also be behind the scenes and look it up if we don't have the answer to verify it. I just think that's, Anton says thank you. <laughs> and we've got, oh, we've got someone joining us from Istanbul. We were just talking today about we may be able to visit uh, Turkey this spring and talking about where we want to visit in Turkey and what we want to taste while we're there. Um, so many of you join us from all over the world. If you didn't know, Michael and I actually host culinary tours, small groups, um, and we pick destinations where, and the, because we have small groups, we can get into good restaurants, we can take a smaller bus, we do cooking classes, and fabulous experiences. They typically are about a week long. If this is something that might interest you, you can come from anywhere in the world. Uh, the trip itself doesn't include the flight, so um, that's up to you to, to get to the de destination. We work with a fantastic travel coordinator, Giovanni. If you want to find information on these tours, you can go to my website, it's annaolson.ca, and there's a Travel with Anna page. And all the current tours are listed. Our next tour is to Puglia, Italy, in the spring, but that one's sold out. So it's the fall tours that are the ones available right now. So while I'm chit-chatting about food and travel and visiting the world, um, I am spooning that streusel topping on top of each muffin and trying to be a little tidier than I was with the batter itself. If you're just joining, I'm making blueberry streusel muffins and pretty much, you know, you just mix it in that one bowl makes a nice even dozen, uh, dozen muffins. <laughs> I have to say, when it comes to creating recipes, little things like getting, oh, there's the first batch, um, getting 12 muffins is pretty tricky to do because I, it, it frustrates me when I, get, I see a recipe and it makes 15 muffins because then all of a sudden you either have one muffin pan and you have to do two batches or you have one pan and it's only got three filled. So I always try and work in dozens wherever I can. And it doesn't always come out evenly on that first try. So let's trade. I'm gonna bring over my cooling rack. Check on these, oh, we're in luck. I wish you could smell the blueberries. Oh, those dried blueberries really do make a difference. And I love how these come up in a beautiful dome. You can see all that blueberry goodness in these go. Now I did notice on last week's thread, and just to let you know, when this video, when I'm done, it will be, uh, put on the channel so you can refer back to it. You can bake along with me later if you wish. Um, but I went in and checked the comments. So if you're watching at a later date and you had a comment asking a question, I went and noticed um, that, now I've forgotten my train of thought. <laughs> what was the question someone asked? Oh, they was asking about how long you preheat your oven. I thought that was a very good question. Everybody's oven is different. What I like to do is always put a thermometer inside the oven itself because just because your oven beeps when it says it's set to the temperature that you turn the dial or press the button to doesn't mean it actually is. And if your oven in gives you that beep to tell you you've hit the temperature, I always let it preheat an extra 10 minutes. So I really do give my oven at least 15 to 15, uh, 20 minutes to preheat before I bake. Because that way you get a beautiful precision in baking and then 
someone you had, uh, I think it was Michelle, had asked about altitude baking. So if you're joining me from Calgary, which is a thousand meters above sea level, and it does qualify as um, on the lower, fortunately it's not full on high altitude baking, but you do have to make adjustments. So if you're making something simple like cookies, there's little you have to do, but anything with a cake-like batter, um, like a muffin, a cake, a banana bread, a loaf, a birthday cake, you have to compensate for lower air pressure. So the, what that means is there's less resistance um, at a higher altitude. So that means when you have something like baking powder, baking soda, or even whipped eggs, there's less pressure at a higher altitude than at sea level. So things rise up really fast. And then because the recipe was designed at sea level, the sugar in the eggs and that magic of science of the way things bond when they bake at higher altitude, they're not baking at that same rate. And so things rise up and then they tend to sink in the center. So the way to compensate that in an easy way is the first thing you wanna do is add a little extra liquid. So where this recipe called for two thirds of a cup, 160 ml of milk, I would add just another, you don't have to add a lot, another tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of milk. That gives your ingredients more space to move around and it will take a little longer for those ingredients to bond together so your cake won't lift and fall in that time. The other thing you wanna do is reduce your leavening. It sounds counterintuitive, but you wanna slow that growth of your baked goods come, um, as they're baking. So then as those ingredients are starting to set, you've got your baking powder lifting and then holding the nice dome shape to the top of your muffins, loaves, and prevents sinking when you're making nice cakes for a special occasion. So I hope that clarifies the high altitude baking. It's an excellent question to ask and Oh, someone's talking about cal I didn't know you could get headaches from Chinooks. I get that change in air pressure and that drastic temperature change does it. I have lots of friends in Calgary, so that's the first I've heard of that. Um, Oh, we've got comments rolling in. This is just like last week. Now that I've wrapped up my baking here, and while I would love to break into one of these muffins, they are far too hot. So I wasn't going to leave you hanging. Here we are. These I baked up. See, I told you, Bonnie, you were getting at least a dozen muffins, probably more. Um, these have cooled down a little bit. I find the streusel topping helps keep the muffins stay fresh for longer because you've got that kind of cap to the top of them. And I do like this recipe because while it holds lots of blueberries, they don't all sink to the bottom. I, this is, the streusel's gonna crumble. They stay in place, so every single bite of this blueberry muffin is going to have a bit of blueberry. I love seeing all the comments coming in. These uh, questions are fantastic. I, what I was trying to say is this happened last week. Everybody started writing all these baking questions when you, you figured out, oh, she's almost done. But it's okay, I will be back. Um, Marianne, these freeze brilliantly. Um, they are definitely a keeper for the freezer. Ideally, most baked goods, I try and not freeze longer than three months because then it's nothing becomes wrong with them. They just tend to pick up fridge taste. Uh, Jane, you're asking, can you use self-raising flour? If you're in the UK, you have that option, yes. So just pull out the baking powder and the salt. You don't need it if you have self-raising flour and you're good to go. Same measurements, so it would be 300 grams and you're all set. Um, oh, and Sebastian, here these questions, I love seeing it. Uh, how do I thicken my favorite jam for Linzer cookie? Hmm, if it's, yeah, that's a tougher one because you know what, admittedly, I prefer using kind of the cheaper jam for my Linzer cookies because they tend to have more sugar and more pectin in them and they don't make the cookie soften up too much where the fruit spreads are all about the fruit and they can seep into the cookie. So that's a very good question. Um, oh, we've got people watching, good morning in Australia. Uh, we've, I'm just checking, making sure that I've answered the questions. 
Uzma is asking, can we use buttermilk? Actually, that would work wonderfully well, and I don't think you have to make any other adjustments. Can you use candle, canned or bottled blueberries? Yes, just drain them very, very well uh, before you stir them into the batter. Um, oh, and what kind of chocolate chips? Shri Jay is ask, asking if you're making chocolate chip muffins. Well, I would go for couverture chocolate chunks. Um, good baking chocolate as opposed to chocolate chips that you add to chocolate chip cookies because then they'll stay nice and soft within the muffin itself even after they cool to room temperature. Um, oh, and Sebastian's saying PC raspberry jam. That's a pretty good one. I do use the PC raspberry jam. I also use the no name. Um, depending on. That's a great opportunity. You want to bolster the raspberry flavor, take the grocery store brand jam, but add a little freeze-dried raspberry powder to it, and that'll amp up the raspberry flavor. And of course, freeze-dried raspberries don't have any added sugar, so it'll add a nice tartness to it too. And okay, you know what, Sarah Fima, we're gonna end with your question, because I need to take a bite of this muffin and then deliver some uh, muffins to Bonnie. Three kitchen tools I can't live without. Well, I definitely use one of them. My microplane style zester for lemon zest, ginger, nutmeg, Parmesan cheese, everything, everything, garlic. I use it every day in the kitchen. Let's see if I have my, I have my flat. Of course I don't have, oh, there's one. My angled offset spatula is, this is an extension of my hand when it comes to either lifting cookie, hot cookies off a tray, a slice of tart or pie out of a pan or a cake, icing a cake, frosting a cake, getting swirls and swishes. That is my number two favorite tool. And well, you know what, honestly, it's gone now, but um, a couple of really good silicone spatulas because these are heat proof and you want them to have a bit of flexibility but not be wimpy they can't be too soft and you want that flexibility so you can get into the bowl so those are my top three tools now michael and i are traveling and we're going to be filming while we're traveling so hopefully we'll have some exciting new travel delicious baking related content to share with you uh, down the line but i will be back with live streams march 5th and march 12th are the next live streams and our fantastic channel manager rob uh, and I were talking about what could be expected and we've been listening to some of your requests so stay tuned I'll pull together those recipes but it's still going to be in that comfort baking world I know you can make this recipe it makes me feel so good when you share that you make these recipes you feel good about yourself and the fact that you've made something to share with those you love. So I wish you a wonderful week. Enjoy your blueberry muffins, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Cheers, everyone. Mm. Ooh, someone all the way from Grinsby is watching. Hey, neighbor. <laughs> Hi, Maria. Mm. Oh yeah, the lemon really comes through. Mm.